If you are pregnant or you've recently had a baby, this podcast is for you. I am your host, Kath Bequee, a physiotherapist working in women's health and mum of three. Inside my online program, Fitness Mama, I just love helping support women to care for their bodies during pregnancy, prepare their bodies for birth and support their after birth recovery, helping them feel confident and strong inside out during this important stage of their lives. In this podcast, join me each week as we dive into all things pregnancy care, childbirth and postnatal recovery, helping you through every step of the journey. It is absolutely possible to feel amazing and confident in our bodies during this motherhood journey, and I want that for you. Come and say hi to me on Instagram at fitnessmama, and let's dive into today's episode. Is a prolapse diagnosis for life? So first up, if you've had a baby or if you are pregnant, you might want to listen to this episode. Even if you don't have symptoms of a prolapse and even if you don't think you've got a prolapse, this knowledge could potentially help you in the future. Because as you know, I am a huge believer that prevention is better than treatment. Proactiveness is better than being reactive. And that's what my membership's all about, is being proactive rather than reactive. But this episode, we're going to discuss, is a prolapse diagnosis for life? And can I get rid of or fix my prolapse? Because this was actually a question one of my members asked inside our membership, Fitness Mama. So every week I jump in and answer all their questions. And I thought this might be a nice um, question to share with everyone listening here today, because it may well really help you even if you don't think it's relevant to you now, it might be relevant to you in the future. So listen up. Before I do dive into this episode, I would love to invite you to come and join us inside Fitness Mama. If reclaiming your pelvic floor core and strength safely is important to you, and if caring for your body confidently during and after pregnancy is really important to you, all of this is what we do inside Fitness Mama. If you found you're not exercising as much as you'd like to during and after or during pregnancy and after birth, perhaps you're busy or you've lost the motivation or you're not sure how to best best be looking after your body. Perhaps you've got prolapse and abdominal muscle separation and you're not sure about the best exercises for you or you'd like to get back into running after birth safely and you want the best kickstarter possible then come and trial fitness free for seven days. Join us for these short, convenient, easy quality workouts that you can do from home or whilst your bubba sleeps, whilst your toddler runs around causing havoc or at the end of a long day at work. Head to fitnessmama.com and the link is in the show notes. Right, let's dive into this topic today. Okay, so the lovely mum who submitted this question, I'm assuming has just seen a physio or a doctor and been told that they've had a prolapse. And firstly, I just want to acknowledge that because that can be a bit of a scary moment. You know, to be told that you've got something which, like, I don't know how much you knew about prolapse before, but I know it can be a quite a scary sounding term. So what we're going to do today is sort of unbunk what it is, and it's not potentially as scary as what you might think. But secondly, I just want to put it right out there straight away that a prolapse doesn't define you. A prolapse shouldn't stop you doing anything that you want to be able to do. You can work with your prolapse and not against it and live the exact life you want to in terms of physical activity, confidence, enjoyment, and all those sorts of things. So I just want to put that right out there. Let's demystify a prolapse and let's be proactive and let's talk about what we options for us. And look, everyone's different. And as you know, this episode is general information only. I do urge anyone that's got any concerns about whether or not they've got a prolapse to go and speak to your um, nearby pelvic floor physio. If you don't know where any physios are, feel free to send me a message on Instagram at fitnessmama. I can find out whereabouts you're located and recommend, like I know physios all around Australia, 
Not so much other countries. I can't help there. But if you're in Australia, come and send me a message on Instagram at Fitness Mama and I can definitely try to suggest a couple of physios that I know in your area. So firstly, let's chat about what a prolapse is. Then let's chat about whether or not we can, and and I've got air quotation marks here, it's like fix it as what the question asked me. Can we fix the prolapse? And then let's talk about ways that we can manage it moving forwards. It's a little bit complicated because there, and I don't love the term prolapse because it's one word that's used to to describe so many potential different scenarios. For example, someone might have a prolapse and not even be symptomatic. And on that note, they've recently changed the um, criteria for diagnosis of a prolapse and you're not technically, you, you don't technically have a prolapse unless it's also symptomatic. So you've got to have symptoms of some sort for it even to be technically considered a prolapse. And I did mention, I think I mentioned, one in two women, according to Australian Continence Foundation, have some degree of prolapse. So these stats are real and That's why it's great we are, you know, this question was asked inside my um, membership and why we're chatting today. So there's bladder, there's uterus, there's the bowels. They're the three main organs inside our pelvis. And if we think about that pelvis like a little room in your house, it holds these three. uh, The pelvis is the bony bony house that holds these three main organs, the bladder, bladder, at the front, the uterus in the middle, which holds the baby, and then your bowel at the back. So those organs are generally suspended nicely in your pelvis with two things. It's the ligaments and the soft tissue that sort of connect it to the pelvis, and then you've got the muscles underneath sort of holding it up. So this, and this is all put quite simply, but they're the two main factors holding up your organs in your pelvis so that they're not flopping down and it's when they flop down that they might start to cause symptoms. For example, if your bladder flops down into your vagina area, that's when some people might feel a bit of a bulge or a lump. Or if your uterus is dropping down a little bit because it doesn't have the support structures holding it to the um, sides of the bony pelvis. So there's the two things. There's the soft tissue structures and then there's the muscle strength. So we can't, if when we have a baby, there can be stretch that happens of both those structures, the soft tissue, like the soft um, soft tissue, connective tissue, but also of the pelvic floor. And in diagnosing, like when I do pelvic floor assessments, you're really wanting to determine is this prolapse caused by a, a muscle strength issue? Is it caused by a connective tissue issue? Is it caused by both? Um, which one's contributing more? And then how severe is it? And I shouldn't use that word severe. What's the grade of prolapse? If it's grade one, grade two, it might not be symptomatic very often. You might only get symptomatic at certain times of the day, perhaps at the end of the day when you've been on your feet all day. Perhaps when if you've got constipation and you're straining on the toilet or you've had a cough and a cold and you've been coughing. and So those lower-grade prolapses aren't always symptomatic all the time. And these are the ones that might be a bit more... Uh, these are the ones which we might be able to help reduce the symptoms by buffering up your pelvic floor strength. Whereas if it's a a higher grade prolapse and it's dropping even further down in your pelvis and you perhaps have a substantial lump that you can visually see, then these might need a different type of management. Perhaps you might need a pessary or you might need to speak to your doctor about whether or not there's surgical options. So the different grades of prolapse, often there's different management strategies. But I do just want to quickly say, even if you do potentially need surgery down the track, you probably wouldn't have surgery until after you've finished having all your babies. And even if you do have surgery down the track, I would still highly recommend in most cases, there's generally still a pelvic floor muscle strength issue. So you still want to do that sort of prehab and that post rehab and building up the muscle strength to support whatever surgical intervention 
occurs. Okay, now let's discuss. This is the, the exciting stuff. Let's discuss now the management options. So how, what do we do if we do have a prolapse or what do we do to help prevent a prolapse so that you can live a healthy, fulfilled life where you're not worried about your prolapse? Today's episode is brought to you by Baby Jogger, making parents' lives easier. For active families, Baby Jogger will be your go-to. Their strollers are designed with your comfort and convenience in mind, allowing you to embrace the joys of parenthood while staying active. With Baby Jogger's well-known quick fold technology, you can effortlessly fold your stroller with just one hand, making it a breeze to store and transport. We know that every family has different needs and Baby Jogger has you covered. They offer a wide range of lightweight, compact options from single to double strollers to all-terrain models. No matter your lifestyle, you'll find the perfect fit. Whether you're navigating through busy streets or tackling rough terrains, their strollers provide a smooth and enjoyable ride for both you and your little ones. And let's not forget about growing families. Whether you're expecting another child or planning for the future, Baby Jogger is there every step of the way. To learn more about their incredible strollers and find the perfect fit for your family, visit their website today on babyjogger.com.au and use the code FIT20, that's F-I-T-20, for 20% of any full-priced product from Baby Jogger. Okay, so there's five management options for you to help support your prolapse, manage your prolapse, be proactive about it um, in this childbearing phase. So the first thing I'm going to say, oh gosh, there's actually one before this. (laughs) The one before what I was going to say is during pregnancy, let's be as strong as possible. Let's get ourselves a beautiful exercise program. Let's work on those important pelvic floor and core muscles that are about to be stretched. You know, with the with your baby in your belly, everyone gets stretched abdominals. With the weight of the baby on your pelvic floor area, everyone gets, you know, this stretch around your pelvic floor area, whether or not you have a vaginal or a cesarean birth. And then, of course, if you have a vaginal birth, there's that extra stretch as well. So pregnancy is a time to really, I I really do think it's a time to invest in your body to help support it in the future. Okay, now the second thing is if you're in those early, the early phase postpartum, if you're listening to this either pregnancy or in the zero to six weeks postpartum, rest, rest, rest. Everything has stretched like an elastic band with pregnancy and childbirth. Think of that elastic band that's been stretched This is a period where we want that natural recoil to occur as much as possible. So all that soft tissue that we've been talking about, the connective tissue, the ligaments, the fascia, the muscles, the pelvic floor muscles, we want that natural recoil to occur. And you can do that with horizontal rest, so taking the weight of gravity off your pelvic floor area, you know, avoiding heaps of walking in this early six weeks, avoiding heaps of lifting. You know, if you've li- been listening to my podcast for a while, you'll know I'm always <laughs> I'm always saying this. Um, hopefully that's not new information. And I'll put a link below for another podcast episode that's all about that first six weeks postpartum recovery period. Okay, the third point is postnatal rehab. Let's reinvest back into our body. Let's you know, boost up our pelvic floor strength and our core strength, the whole body strength. So for those inside Fitness Mama, you're in the perfect place because you know that all the workouts are prolapse friendly. You know that all perfectly built for that rehab period after having a baby. And you know that they will focus on those important areas postpartum. Walking, a lot of women I hear, they say, oh, I've I've been doing lots of walking after having a baby. And that is brilliant. I love walking. It's free. It gets you out. It releases the endorphins. It can be social if you're walking with someone else. It gets you into the fresh air. But it doesn't focus on those core muscles, those foundations that have just been stretched with pregnancy and birth. So I really do think we need something to complement the walking that you're doing. So that is probably one of the most important things we can talk about. And this is also setting you up for future pregnancies. 
um, you know, it was setting you up for menopause. It's really just on our doorstep. I feel like I've just finished the whole childbirth bearing stage and now <laughs> I'm in my 40s and here we are, menopause. Okay, number four, and this is also super important, have a chat to your doctor and let's chat about, you know, all the things in terms of managing your health managing your bowels, avoiding constipation, getting on top of any chronic health conditions like smoking, coughing, if you've got a chronic cough or asthma, um, obesity, all these things are putting extra pressure through these pelvic floor and core muscles. Okay, number five, let's say you do have a prolapse and you've done your postnatal rehab and you've feeling a lump but you or a bulge or whatever symptom it is that you're feeling and you really want to get back into running let's say running as an example but there are things there are options there's other conservative measures apart from just um, the strengthening side for example pessaries so find yourself a pelvic floor physio who fits a pessary and this this might be something that you pop in like a tampon before you go for a run or before you go to the gym there's different shapes of pessaries. Often they're, they're like silicon, they're quite um, soft, like a tampon, but different shapes. You'd pop it in before you go for a run or to the gym. You might do your workout and then when you come home, you take out the pessary or at the end of the day, you take out the pessary. There are pessaries that stay in for longer periods of time, but generally for women who are sexually active and who are younger, these like intermittent pessaries, like popping them in and then out are uh, are more popular. And these pessaries can be amazing to stop all your symptoms, to help you exercise and get all those beautiful health benefits of, you know, doing what you love, like not holding you back, getting you rather than not feeling like you can play netball with your friends, you know, pop a pessary in and then you can go and do all, all these things are so important for our mental health and our confidence and our general health. So pessaries are a great option here. And then finally, if you've done all of the above and you're still getting symptoms and it's still really bothering you and it's perhaps impacting your day-to-day, then maybe that, def- well, you can chat with your healthcare team at any stage. I always recommend that. But that's might be when you chat to your um, GP about getting a referral to a gynecologist to discuss whether or not surgery is, better, is, is for you. And again, surgery has its pros and cons, um, you know, so it's something to discuss Um, in your particular situation, whether or not that might be helpful for you. But as I said at the start, even if you have surgery, we still need to do all those earlier steps, especially that postnatal rehab, you know, managing your health conditions, especially your bowels, um, like avoiding constipation, that sort of stuff. So even if you do end up down the surgery line, we still want to make sure our body is in peak condition to get the most out of the surgery, but also to help prevent any further issues down the track. Whew, how does that sound, ladies? So in answer to the question, is a prolapse diagnosis for life? Yes, no, maybe. Perhaps or perhaps symptoms might reduce. Like for me, I, had, I was symptomatic early on and I'm no longer symptomatic. Maybe you might, with some different treatment and management techniques, uh, reduce your symptoms, as I said. Does it actually reduce the actual issue that's occurred? Don't know. It depends on your situation. So yes, no, maybe is the answer to the question, is a prolapse diagnosis for life? But either way, hopefully that's been really helpful to reassure you that, one, there's a lot that you can do to you know, just do what you want to in life. Two, it shouldn't stop you doing anything and really whatever your goals are, I hope you can get a healthcare team around you, get an exercise program around you. You know, Fitness Mama can help you with this. Your physio can help you with this. Get your support network in place to help you achieve the goals that you want to be able to achieve. So that's it, ladies. Come and send me a message on Instagram at Fitness Mama if this episode has been helpful for you and know that you're not alone out there. So that's it, ladies. Hope you have a fabulous day and I look forward to you joining me next week for another episode of the Fitness Mama podcast. 
Thanks for listening to the Fitness Mama podcast brought to you by the Fitness Mama freebies found at www.fitnessmama.com forward slash free. So please take a few seconds to leave a review, subscribe so you don't miss an episode and be sure to take a screenshot of this podcast, upload it to your social media and tag me at Fitness Mama so I can give you a shout out too. Until next time, remember an active pregnancy, confident childbirth and strong postnatal recovery is something that you deserve. Remember our disclaimer, materials and contents in this podcast are intended as general information only and shouldn't substitute any medical advice, diagnosis or treatment. I'll see you soon.